Hi, another film I watched this weekend was Anon, the film written and directed by Andrew Mickel, whose previous work I had seen almost all of. Um, it follows on from his previous films like Gattaca or In Time in presenting a near future but still slightly retro styled world where one item has become uh, an, uh, an example of scientific uh, meddling gone too far that um, in previous films we had uh, Gattaca where um, genetic engineering meant that there was a new class system between those who had uh, been genetically engineered from their parents' DNA and those who were more natural born and therefore lower class citizens. In, in time, we had the idea of people being born with a certain time value that they cease to age once they reach 25 years old and then had to earn time in the way that we earn money. And effectively, when you ran out of time, that was the end of your life. The rich have millions of years banked away, allowing them to effectively live forever. While the young, uh, while the poor have to live effectively hand to mouth, earning enough each day so that they don't have to worry about waking up dead the following morning. In Anon, it's a world of absolute surveillance. Uh, by some technological means, people are continually uh, recording their own sight. Um, the world is one of uh, augmented reality. You look at a building and the storefront and its advertising all appears as an augmented reality vision. Uh, inside your own site. You immediately recognise everyone who you ever pass and told everything about them. Uh, but a uh, police inspector, played by Clive Owen, one day walks past a woman who has no such register attached to her at all. He finds this strange. And soon people are actively being murdered, their sight feeds suddenly switching to those of their killers as they are shot in the head. With no apparent leads, uh, given that normally you can simply tap into the dead person's uh, uh, sight to see who it was, uh, they have to launch a genuine murder inquiry for the first time in a long time and discover that someone is going around killing those who had previously had their memories edited to remove things they didn't want other people to know in this world of total surveillance. And the girl itself, herself, becomes uh, a major figure in the inquiry, played by Amanda Seyfried. I have a lot of time for Andrew Nichol. Um, I've seen, I think, all his previous films, um, almost all of them in the cinema, uh, with the exception of The Host, which is the only one of his films not to be adapted from his own original material. Um, and I've always found him to be uh, an interesting and thoughtful filmmaker, in some ways a, uh, a sort of perhaps cousin successor, to J.G. Ballard, my favourite author, in taking present-day trends, uh, present trends and uh, extrapolating them uh, to their logical conclusion, just as um, Ballard wrote about people being trapped on traffic islands in the style of Robinson Crusoe or uh, having obsessive sexual relationships with your own car. So the idea of time is money or the uh, genetic uh, developments creating a new underclass are created through Nichols' work. And he's also, most famously, I think, the originator of The Truman Show. His script was heavily rewritten before it was ultimately produced, but he nevertheless earned an Oscar nomination. Um, Anon is unfortunately one of his weaker films. Um, there is a lot that could be done with this central concept, the idea of it being a world without privacy and yet also a world without visible labels. Um, you're able to turn off these labels in your own sight feed so that the world is just an empty grey blank. Unlabeled buildings, unlabeled products, because you look at a can of uh, a can of food and your augmented reality brings up exactly what the food is, uh, because everything is traceable. Uh, this is an interesting concept, but it it never really is properly developed. I think there are too many holes in the story, too many holes in the concept. It needs the rigour of someone like Christopher Nolan, who thinks everything through to the most, um, uh, the most uh, infinitesimal detail, um, and then usually forgets to actually add on a decent story. Um, Nickel is interested in the story and has uh, a great deal of emotional engagement. We have um, our main character is divorced. Uh, his son died some years ago in a car accident. 
and he repeatedly accesses his uh, stored memories until the girl seeking revenge on him for his interference in her business starts deleting them and effectively forcing him to rely on his own fallible memories rather than his own pristine digital ones. Um, there is this um, element of emotion that I think works very strongly in Nichols' favour, but the lack of rigour and the lack of full interrogation of the science fiction concept, I think, creates a problem. Something I was also surprised by was how much sex there is in this film. There's a lot of sex, there's a lot of women's boobs, and I'm not sure they all needed to be there. Um, the idea of the girl having a sexual relationship with a lot of the victims seemed strange and not terribly coherent and, and didn't really make sense to me. Um, and I'm not sure even then it needed to be as explicit as it was, because there's an awful lot of female nudity. No male nudity, notably Clive Hohen even keeps his vest on during a sex scene. Um, but I think this this is the work of a, a talented director and a talented writer, but not working at the best of their abilities and really needing more time and more thought to make this really workable. There's some great production design. The film is, I think, largely shot in, in New York, but also with some uh, filming in Canada and Germany. Um, I think Cl Clive Owen and Amanda Seyfried are extremely good. Seyfried I've never seen as closed down and as um, uh, as sort of clam-like and withdrawn, I thought was very good indeed. Um, a character perhaps comparable to um, Elizabeth Salander from The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. But overall, it's, it's not as good as it could have been. Um, Nickel has made some really terrific films. I would recommend Jataka extremely highly. I think the, the finished version of The Truman Show is very much in the spirit of his other work, and even his lesser-known films, like uh, Good Kill or Lord of War, which I think the sequel is apparently now in production, uh, are very much worth seeing. Uh, Simone, his um, widely dismissed uh, second, I think, uh, full-length feature, I think is extremely clever, a, a very creative and sardonic satire of um, the Hollywood star system. But this is probably his weakest film as a director. And although I wouldn't say it's a bad film, and I wouldn't say it's not worth seeing, it's worth going in with your guard up.